So a whole bunch of you have already been bugging me, asking me what my new setup is. So I'm actually going to take you step by step and how I assemble this and all the pieces to it. So you guys can see how it goes together. And I'm going to explain what makes it special. First of all, I'm just going to say it. The motor is nothing special. It is just a 55 pound Newport trolling motor. And as you can see, I've been beating it up pretty good. But, but there's a whole lot of things that went into this to make this work to be a kayak motor for me. So first of all, I've kept my foot steering that I had when I had the Torquedo. This hasn't changed at all. Probably the biggest part of this that takes the most work for this boat anyways, was to make the frame for the boat to attach the trolling motor. So what I did is I went to Home Depot and got three quarter EMT, which is just a thin piece of conduit. Uh, it's, it's actually very thin, but in, in a pipe form, it's fairly strong. And yeah, all I did was basically I started with a piece of plate to bolt into this rear switch pad. And then I bent the pipe around strategically over top of the strap. I don't know what to call this. A little, the loop. So that I can just strap that down right over top of this bar, which holds this nice and tight to the boat. The next thing I did was I took some thin sheet metal and made a battery holder thing. And I, and I kept it wide enough that I could still get to both of my valves. And then had some plates I welded in for the back. Screwed some boards in, some treated boards just to space it out for the mount. You'll see in a second why I did that. Put a little hole in the tubing here to put a little red flag when it's hanging on the back of the truck. The uh, foot steering is just zip tied here on the outside of the battery. Before we get to the battery, I want to show you that the height I made the battery is so that this pump can stay with me at all times and still get strapped down underneath of that. I'm going to put the motor on real quick. This is a 55 pound Newport trolling motor. So the reason for that blocking I put was so that these handles are away from the handle on the kayak so that I can spin them. They were hitting this if I didn't have that extra little piece in there. You just set that in there, tighten it down just like you would if you had a boat. From there, I can hook up my steering. This is the steering triangle I bought off of Amazon. It's literally solid aluminum, much stronger than the other one. I highly recommend if you're gonna do this to buy this metal one, don't buy the plastic one. I was being cheap when I built this and uh, it didn't pay off. This steering triangle works way better than a plastic one. So this steering triangle actually comes at like a 90 degree. Like this arm was here. And I put this in a vise and bent this open because with the arms being straight, you were only getting a few degrees of travel. Bending this back a few degrees gave me plenty of steering. I can go 90 degrees now with the pull of the rope. The steering on this setup is so much easier than the Torquedo. Uh, I'm pretty sure a small child could work the foot pedal of this while this is under full speed. No problem whatsoever. It's very easy to manipulate. A modification I've done to the trolling motor itself is the little locking mechanism that's in this to like raise and it clicks. I just removed it. Because if I hit a rock, I want this to be able to swing up out of the way like the Torquedo. It's simple enough. Just remove all that mechanism inside there. You don't need it. I left the little depth thingy here. Not that it's needed, but I left it in there in case I want to adjust some things. One of the cooler parts of this is I have... So I have a pulley system that attaches to the trolling motor. I have a little loop welded on here to slide through there. I have it through a little D-ring here. This is important because while I'm on the water and I need to lift this up out of the water so I don't hit rocks, I just pull this, it lifts it straight up out of the air, and I mount it right here. On the little plate I already had for my foot steering, hooks on there perfect distance, raises it pretty much completely out of the water, just a little bit of this fins underwater, which actually isn't bad because when I'm paddling this and I can't use the motor that fin will actually help direct me a little bit and i could steer it while i paddle and it helps me drive the boat a little bit but i also have a couple different settings so this setting here i've actually remade this plate 
and extended it with a hole for the carabiner. This setting is so that when I'm going full speed and I'm just trying to make distance and save battery power or whatever, I will slowly raise this up as I'm driving and picking up speed and hook it in this. And that is about as high as I can get this out of the water while going full speed and it doesn't cavitate. Other than that, this next setting, this D-ring here, I use for if I have a passenger in and it raises it just a little bit, about an inch and a half, because the body weight of the other person sinks the boat enough that you don't need it to be all the way down to not cavitate. And the higher you can keep this out of the water when you drive it, the more efficient and faster you're going to be. And then when I'm by myself, I just drop it, let it go all the way down, and that's where I use it at. All right, so let's grab the battery. We'll go over that. This is where things get pretty special. So, throw the battery right in there like that. I have a strap to hold the lid down, but this strap could also double as, as a way to mount it to the kayak. It'll go through the bar front and back, if you wanna do that. I rarely ever do that. I'm not worried about flipping my boat. And so from here, you know, I just used the power wires that came with the trolling motor. So I've retained the breaker that came with the system from Newport for safety. And uh, it's a 60 amp breaker, but I'm pretty positive this breaker will actually trip over heat as well because I've actually run this to the point where it's kicked and I kicked it back on and it worked for a second and then kicked back off. And then once I let it cool down, it was fine. So it's a good idea to keep this in place, but I have it to a quick connect that goes right there just like that. And then the control, clips in just like that waterproof connection don't really need it but it's nice because it has all the wires in there you need so real quick from there i want to show i want to show that my paddles still fit in here just like that get strapped down there this paddle fits in there just like that same as the other side holds in it's currently in the position to have two people when my seat is back here, these are very easily reachable in any situation. So everything I need is in this boat, fits perfectly. All right, so let's get into the battery, which makes this possible to be what I consider a kayak motor. Right off the bat, waterproof connections on both the power and the control. I save the voltmeter off of the top of the trolling motor and epoxy that in. So let's open this up. And okay, as you could have guessed, I'm sure some of you already guessed, I am using a PWM, but not just any PWM. So what makes this one special is, and hopefully I have some pictures of this, I may not, but there is a fan on this one to keep it cool. You know, one of the major issues with using a PWM that I've read anyways, and actually a PWM means pulse width module, and basically it takes your power, cuts it in and out, so, that, so you can control the speed. The main issue with these, it seems to be overheating, uh, because that thing is doing a, a lot of work, you know, cutting the power in and out, in and out. It, I think it's important to have the one with the fan, but if you have one with the fan, you still have to put this somewhere where it's not getting wet and getting destroyed. And a lot of people will put them in a sealed box. This whole big thing will be in a sealed box. This will be your controller here, big box but then it's sealed. So that fan isn't helping you because it's just going to saturate the air inside that sealed box and then overheat. So what I have done is take the PWM, extend all of the control wires out into a control so that the PWM can stay in this box underneath this lid that I've made a little roof for. And there are channels inside here that take the air from that fan and blows it out the top of this roof so that it's sucking in cold air from the lid here, taking the hot air straight out the roof and blowing it out when this runs. So it keeps everything, the PWM and the battery, nice and cool. And so far, zero issues with the controller. But the cool thing about this is with me running the control parts of the PWM outside of here, this is what my remote looks like. It's just this little box with your forward and reverse, off would be middle, and your variable speed knob. I don't know what to call it. 
variable speed switch controller thing. And it's just this little box. I can get, I can now get in and out of my boat on this side. I can catch fish from this side. I can fish from this side. It's totally open and it's in a sealed box, weatherproof connector. That is the ticket if you ask me. That is what makes this very special. But what's nice about this box being a little bit big is I get to keep the hose from my air pump that's stored underneath there in there. So I'm not wasting my storage spaces in the back of the seat or in the boat. I have my patch kit, some electrical tape. I got wrenches, vice grips, zip ties. I got extra nut for my trolling motor. And so the final thing that actually makes this amazing in my eyes is the propeller. So some of you have probably been saying this whole time, how are you going five plus miles an hour on a trolling motor? Well, it's because of these APC propellers. Normally speaking, if I didn't just break one of these, this would have been tucked in there with all the zip ties and all the other stuff. So your standard 55 pound trolling motor, you might be lucky to see four miles an hour. But with that APC propeller, I'm getting five plus uh, very cheap propellers are about $6 a piece. They aren't going to be as durable as an actual trolling motor because, well, look at it, it's a little thin, right? But the benefit is they're like six bucks and you can keep a spare one with you. Heck, you could have four spares in that box if you wanted to. And it would still be cheaper than buying a new propeller. Uh, this is the 10 by five. It's a five pitch and, uh, that gets me close to five miles an hour. They do have a propeller that I have modified to get me up to the five and a quarter miles an hour. And that's the one I normally run. And that's actually when I broke and it wasn't really meant for a trolling motor like these are, but I modified to do so. And uh, it's their 12 by six pitch push propeller that they have for planes. And uh, it's not really meant for this. And I think that's why it broke. It's a little thinner. But it did work really good. Uh, cut it down to 10 inches and got myself five and a quarter miles an hour. And it is actually a propeller that will kick the breaker eventually. You know, if you know electrics, you got a battery, it's 13 volts. As the battery displaces itself, the voltage drops. But to get the same amperage to your motor, the amps rise. So with knowing that, using a propeller that's on the limit of this breaker, you know, as the battery drops, you're more prone to kick this breaker. But with that 12 by six propeller, I was able to use that in the fast wire to get through it. It doesn't kick the breaker, but on the end of a trip, using it full steam ahead to go home, definitely kick the breaker eventually after a mile or two. But that's what I wanted. I wanted a propeller that would use this system to its max, basically abusing it to get through a fast section and then chill out a little bit and continue on. And it's doing exactly that. I ran through that so fast that I am having trouble breathing right now. A lot of information, a lot of stuff to be said. The YouTuber side of me said, man, I should have multiple camera angles. I should do this and fancy that. I'm just going to say what it is. I, I've been doing YouTube for years and making a video like this with a whole bunch of edit stuff is just a pain in my butt. When it comes to the lid, I've used a couple different epoxies and none of them really held until I used this JB Weld plastic weld worked pretty decent. Uh, I'm not gonna say it's the best, but it worked better. It actually worked better than me plastic welding this. You know, I used a torch and the correct plastic wire and everything, and it looked nice, but it fell apart. So, is what it is. So, without going and looking at all the numbers, like I said, it's like 200, 250 for the motor, 200 bucks for the battery, you know, 50 bucks for a steering triangle. I don't know, 30 bucks for some connectors and boxes and stuff. Uh, I'm sure I should go look up the actual prices and I may put that in a list here on the screen. But I, I want to say it was less than 700 bucks to make a system that beat the Torquedo 403 twice as much and cost you about a third of the price. So, if you have some skills, you can weld, you can do electrical stuff and make stuff and do stuff. This this is right up your alley. I think this is the best way to do this. The only thing that I can see me doing in the future 
would be upgrading to a bigger motor uh, but with that comes extra weight and a bigger propeller size and more battery power so i don't know if i'm going to do that but if you wanted to do that even in my case right now all i would have to do would be buy the bigger motor and then just buy another battery mount them side by side in here readjust this whole thing and then i can run something that would be equivalent to an 1103 which would be like an 86 pound, 100 pound, 120 pound. I don't know what motors they make, but you could go, sky's the limit. If you want to go faster, you can go faster with a trolling motor. Just use the right propeller. This setup is technically a quarter of the price of the Torquedo 403 and a fifth of the price of an 1103. Of course, price would increase to make an equivalent of the 1103, but still, I bet you 25% of the total cost. But looking at the benefits of this not only is it way cheaper uh it's been way more durable you're not hurting this this is meant to go on a giant boat and slam into rocks all day the worst you have to do is break a propeller this shaft twice the size of the torpedo i have smashed this in the rocks it is not bent it is not loud speaking of not being loud this thing is silent compared to the torpedo that torpedo was driving me insane listening to this and it's not just the torpedo i am seeing many many more youtubers out there with motors on their boats from newport and torpedo they're the main ones and they're both loud that's all you hear in the video that's all they're hearing when they're fishing it is horrible this is absolutely silent in comparison i have landed absolute monster fish six foot from my boat with this running It's a freaking giant. It's a giant. That to me is the biggest benefit here, is it's silent. I'm no longer not catching fish because of the sound. I don't care what anyone says, that torpedo is scaring fish. The steering is better. Very easy to steer compared to the torpedo. Way less fatigue on your legs and joints. Much easier to turn. I don't even have it set on the outside. You could even go easier on the outside if you wanted to. Another benefit is you can use any battery you want. It just got to be a 12 volt battery. If you find yourself stranded somewhere, your battery dies. You can charge this. If you can get somebody on another boat, you could do some MacGyver stuff. And charge this from their boat and you can get home or you could hook up solar panels on your boat side so that if you do run out you just sit and enjoy nature for a couple hours and you get enough charge to go back home if you wanted to you don't have to buy this proprietary stupid voltage 30 volt screw that another one of the biggest benefits is like i said this is my controller no longer do i have this big clumsy honking thing waiting to be hit by a fish or myself and throw me out of the boat just that right there simple stays on the boat speaking of staying on the boat that's the other benefit here about the same amount of things to disassemble here but let's go through this controller quick connect power quick connect steering quick connect other steering quick connect to raise the motor or trim quick connect undo your mount pick up the motor and then pick up your battery and guess what that's it this is what i carry to my boat that's it just these two that's it you don't have a third controller to carry that you can't make in one trip because you can't carry it all now you can carry it all you get your boat to the water and then you carry this and you're done besides well your book bag and your fish and stuff it's so many things that these kayak motor manufacturers are screwing people with it's unbelievable but let's talk about the negatives real quick first negative i do not have a magnetic kill switch attached to me or on my person so if i fall in the water while this is on guess what she's gonna keep on driving nothing i can really do about that i'm sure i could but i don't really care uh, i don't plan on coming out of my boat i'm sure no one plans on coming out of their boat but Worst case scenario, this thing's just going to drive itself into land somewhere. It's an inflatable boat. It's not like it's a 1,600 pound boat. Now, the next negative we need to talk about here that may have some of you concerned, but I'm telling you, it is of no concern. And that is the weight. Let's 
get her zeroed out. Looks pretty good. All right, first up, battery. What we got? 22, let's go, 24 pounds. 24. Torquedo battery. 10, 12, 12 pounds. All right, this is gonna be not the best way to do this, but I'm going to try to lightly balance this. We are looking at 18 pounds. Again, not the greatest way, but we're going to try and balance this guy. That's six, a little over six. We'll give it six pounds. But, if you remember, you can't run that motor without a guard. This is my homemade guard because it was killing itself every time you bump the rock. That is four pounds. Now, I'm not going to get the controllers. The Torquedo controller is heavier than my controller. My frame I made, I actually don't think it would be that much heavier than the Torquedo mount. Again, I'm not too worried about that. The weight difference is minimal. That's really the biggest thing right here is just those two. So let's add these up. 12, 42 pounds, 10, 22 pounds. That would be a difference of 20 pounds heavier for the trolling motor. Think about this, just the 20 extra pounds. It's only 20 extra pounds. Like really think about that, let that sink in. The whole point of these kayak motors were to be faster than a trolling motor and lighter. And I bought a massive battery compared to the Torquedo battery and we're only 20 pounds heavier. Is that 20 pounds of weight really worth anything? When you have to take it off the boat to carry your boat anyways. I have the lightest boat known to man, kinda, at 41 pounds, probably getting closer to 50 pounds with the foot steering and the bright brackets and things and switch pads and whatever. But the Torquedo still weighs 22 pounds. So 50 plus 22 is 72 pounds. Now, I am not the strongest man alive, and I'm sure most of you aren't either, but a 13 foot long boat that weighs 72 pounds, I believe still gonna require you to take that torpedo off and battery because that is a huge pain in the butt to try and carry all that to the river on its own anyways. So my point is no matter what, you're gonna be taking your boat down to the river first, then you're gonna have to come back for the torpedo and battery. But with the torpedo, you have to come back for the torpedo, the battery, and the controller. Which is very hard to carry all three at once. When all you have to do is carry the motor and battery in my setup, and it weighs 20 pounds extra. What is that 20 pounds hurting? Nothing. Nothing. Most of these newer boats are good for several hundred pounds or more. This boat is good for 650 pounds. 20 pounds ain't hurting this boat. As you can tell kind of worked up about this stuff. I hate seeing people get ripped off. The whole sales portion of the world drives me insane. If you don't have a little bit of brain and thought process behind your purchases, you will get screwed. And the American economy runs on that kind of stuff, I promise you. But I can't bear to see people go and spend 3,000 plus dollars on a kayak motor setup for what benefit what benefit and I'll, I'll tell you what the benefit is for the people that will still choose to buy those it's a name brand thing they gotta have the torpedo they want the new port look what i got fancy this fancy that i'll stick to my trolling motor bud i got no problem saying i run a trolling motor that goes farther faster and quieter than yours <laughs> And now you're saying, oh, boy, well, you're only getting five miles an hour. Speed is not what I'm after. If I wanted to hit those numbers, I could do so with a trolling motor. You just buy a bigger one. Maybe I'll do it in the future after I run this one to its ragged edge. We'll see. But if I wanted to go seven plus miles an hour like an 1103, I would buy one more battery, which would be 200 extra bucks. And I would buy the 86 pound motor, which would be like a $300 bill. So for three to 400 extra dollars, because you might find a bigger than an 86 pound. There's other trolling motors out there. 
you could go the seven, eight, nine miles an hour. So you're still 25% of the cost. Anyways, that's my setup. That's how I build it. That's why I build it. Hopefully this helps you guys figure out what you want to do. Hopefully this stops people from shying away from trolling motors that have been around for what seems like a hundred years at this point that are reliable and quiet, efficient. Stop buying in to all the advertisements in the world. They got me too. Don't think I'm not susceptible to spending too much money because I did it too, but I'm not doing that again. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I would greatly appreciate it if you leave me a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. If this video helped you out, you enjoyed it, and you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. I'll see you next time. Hold up one second. There's actually one last thing I want to say. This video that I just made that you just watched actually made me realize that th this, this setup could use a little more attention than I've given it. Uh, how you just seen it was like the first version. I just slapped it together, get it on the water, and, and test it, right? Well, since then, I decided, well, the boat itself, I had put this plastic stuff on the side to keep the seat from squeaking right well it was a giant piece that went the whole boat all the way up into here which is actually the second version of that the first version was a little smaller but ended up folding up and getting messed up and it was falling apart so the bigger version kind of held together a little better but then it still got warped and messed up so now i decided to just cut pieces or just enough for both seat positions so that i don't squeak and uh same thing for the back uh i've actually went and i've shortened the controller wire so that I have just a little bit of slot back here when there's two positions. And with this, I just zip tie to this ring. And when I move my seat back for when I'm alone, I just zip tie to this ring. And uh, so I clean that up, shorten this up. Every single electrical connection is now soldered because I did have some issues with some of my crimps falling apart. So that's taken care of. I shortened the height of the post by like eight inches so that I could also shorten some of my power line a good bit a little less weight on the boat cutting that off and all the wires getting cut shorter i did leave some extra here in case i go do something crazy like eerie and there's some waves and i need to drop this down to make sure it's not coming out in the waves so yeah i just want to show you that real quick it looks a little better if you ask me a little bit lighter and uh no more wires should be pulling apart in the crimp